<laughs> oh, Splatoon devs, thank you. The custom Splattershot Jr. is here, and it has Torpedo and Wave Breaker. Now, is it the Auto Bomb Wave Breaker kit that I've been looking for? No, but this is also just gonna let you be an absolute menace to society, and I am all here for it. The Wave Breaker has only been a handful of weapons up until now, which have included the Heavy Splatling, the E-Leader, the Dually Squelchers, and the Range Blaster. See a pattern here? None of these weapons are short-range painting powerhouses like the old Splattershot Jr. You could argue the case of the Dually Squelcher being able to put down a lot of paint, absolutely, but this is now a completely different ball game. A weapon like this will probably have a rather low points to special, unless the dev team is afraid of it, which they, they should be. <laughs> I think it will be something that will be used for absolute evil, especially on meme teams. Please, for a moment, think about trying to survive four wave breakers going off while you're trying to capture one of those splat zones in the middle of Eel Tail Alley. Or trying to stand on a tower while there's wave breakers in random corners nearby. Um, it's, it's not gonna be fun for you. It's just gonna be fun for the people that are running the wave breakers, aka those juniors. Do you remember the single player level in Splatoon 3? The one where you have to jump on over all the waves? What if you're doing that, but instead it's going on in Turf War while your teammates have dangerous high damage weapons like the like Blaster or like a 96 Gal or like a Slosher? What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? Hopefully uh, away, <laughs> please. This isn't even the first time the Splattershot Jr. has tried to fill this niche. Back during Splatoon 1, the custom Splattershot Jr. had the Echolocator, which did basically this, but obviously the Echolocator was a global special that could automatically mark all opponents, as opposed to the Wave Breaker, where an opponent has to stand on the wave before anything happens. The Wave Breaker's large amount of damage, though, makes this weapon very, very dangerous, because it would only take like two or three shots from Splattershot Jr. to finish off an opponent that's already been hit. The Jr. could also use this Wave Breaker as a way to evade a fight, because it takes a little bit of damage before actually blowing up. So you've got this weapon that puts down a ton of paint, so we can get a bunch of Wave Breakers, and you're gonna give it Torpedo? The sub-weapon that lets you chase down your foes? The sub-weapon that lets you also track your opponents? The sub-weapon that blows up and drops a bunch of paint when it does that? Uh, okay, that's fine with me. <laughs> Literally, the first thing I did this morning was go on Twitter and be like, Hey, special charge up. <laughs> I don't know how low they'll put the special out on this, but I am curious what'll happen if it is low enough. This weapon wants to be your ninja squid killer because, uh, hey, there's that carbon roller with the burst bombs coming out. It's got Zooka. Wouldn't you like to know where it is before it tries to jump you? Throw your good old torpedo up into the air, and if that carbon roller or any other sneaky foe is hiding nearby, the torpedo will find them right away. An opponent also can't sneak up to you with swimming if they're marked by the Wave Breaker. Because not only will they take damage automatically, but they'll also get marked. Because this Splattershot Jr. isn't trying to throw double bombs, it also doesn't have to run a large amount of sub saver. I mean, you could if you don't want to have a lot of your paint taken away by your torpedo, but you don't have to. What that means is you could do other stuff. Like, be more mobile. The Splattershot Jr. is a lightweight class weapon. It already is super mobile, but you could also be more, making this weapon super duper fun for stuff like Rainmaker or Clamblitz. If you're feeling spicy, you could do stuff like put on some special power-up, and then you could see the waves from your wave breaker go even further out than they already do. But what kind of stuff would you want to reach that might be far away from you? Um, what about that thing? That thing that nobody is really happy about in the meta right now? That thing that the, 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 the crab tank? Oh yeah, that one? You mean the special ability that when it jumps can't actually hit you or your teammates? Hmm, wouldn't it just be a shame to have more weapons in the game that might be used a little bit more, that might have Wave Breaker? 
Aw, oh, man. It's just a shame that they put the Wave Breaker on a Splattershot Jr., a weapon that a lot of people like to play already. Oh, man. I'm, I'm kicking a rock away because I'm so disappointed by this. <laughs> What gives this sub and special kit so much power is also the problem that occurs with this game anyway, which is the maps. So many of these maps are just so, you know, hallway condensed or have significant choke points that being able to put down a wave breaker and or torpedo and or multiple torpedoes, if you throw down one torpedo, then throw your wave breaker, wait for the torpedo to explode and then throw another one, uh -huh. Between the enormous paint output and being able to block off your foes with everything else that you've got, the custom Splattershot Jr. is a significant threat, and that's what makes it fun. One more danger of the torpedo is that you don't want to forget that if you've taken any damage in Splatoon, you'll be visible on your opponent's map. So if you throw a torpedo and your opponents think, bah, that's just, that's just one torpedo, I don't have to move out of the way of that, and they take that damage, suddenly they'll be visible on your map. If they heal off quickly, they'll go away fast, but now you know the approximate location of one of your opponents. You can use that to your advantage, that's so you can stop them from being able to do whatever they want. Whether that's flanking, whether that's hiding in a corner for you to come on by, whether that's going on over to the tower, they don't get to do that anymore, because now you can call out that opponent to your teammates, or just go deal with the problem yourself. Yay, Battle Junior! This will be a completely different playstyle from the current Splattershot Jr. in the game, but that's the point. That's what we want. We want each weapon to have its own niche, so the game is even more fun. It adds to more different playstyles that you can watch other people use, or you can see happen when you're in a game of solo queue. I'm excited for the direction of Splatoon 3. Of course, building a meme team of just custom Splattershot Juniors to defeat a singular crab is kind of silly but it's funny, and I like that. I was already happy with the Slosher Deco, but Nintendo said, why don't we just give Vic another really fun kit to play for the next three months? And I say, thank you. <laughs> do you like this kit after hearing me talk about it? I hope you do. We will rise up, Junior Brethren, with now not one, but two absolutely wild kits to work with in Splatoon 3. Again, um, Nintendo, if you want to give me Autobomb Wave Breaker on Sloshing Machine or try Slosher in a future update, I would not complain in the slightest. Just in case you're thinking of me out there. If you, the viewer, want to keep thinking of me, though, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos from me in the future. Splatoon 3 is such a fun game, and I'm so happy we have more months of content updates in the future. Have a good one.